Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at Tempered Steel, another recent addition from the latest anthology expansion. A 3 mana enchantment saying artifact creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, so very powerful anthem effect, although it does come with a big restriction of only pumping artifact creatures. And then another incentive for playing all these artifact creatures is Steel Overseer, a 2 mana artifact creature construct that can tap to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each artifact creature we control, including the Steel Overseer itself, so this can very quickly get out of hand if unanswered. And then another reason to be playing all these artifacts is All That Glitters, the 2 mana enchantment aura that can enchant one of our creatures, giving it plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact and or enchantment we control, including the All That Glitters, so this can also very quickly get out of hand and potentially kill the opponent in one or two attacks. Pairs very well with our evasive creatures like Ornithopter and Ginger Brute, which are two of the other cards that are pretty much included in every Tempered Steel deck I've seen so far. Ornithopter is 0 mana 0-2 flyer, so it doesn't do much by himself, but as soon as we pair it with Steel Overseer, All That Glitters or Tempered Steel, it starts becoming a lot more threatening. And then Ginger Brute as a 1 mana 1 1 haste food golem that can also become unblockable except by creatures with haste. And for 2 mana we can also sacrifice it to gain 3 life. And then another addition that I see in pretty much every Tempered Steel deck is Stonecoil Serpent as an X creature that has reach, trample and protection from multicolors and enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So we can play it for 1 mana if we just need a cheap artifact, but we can also play it as a much bigger threat in the late game, so it makes for an excellent mana sink. And then some of my individual card choices that don't necessarily appear in every Tempered Steel deck. Decided to play Sparring Construct at 1 mana as another cheap artifact creature that when it dies puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control. So it's not a very impressive 1 drop, but we just want to make sure we have enough cheap artifacts to make all these synergies work. Another 1 drop we can consider is a Gargoyle, which has an activated ability to give it flying, so it gives us another evasive threat. Or we could play Chamber Sentry, although that card becomes a lot more appealing as soon as we add a second color to the deck so we can potentially play it for x equals 2 so just want to make sure we have enough cheap artifacts to make all these synergies worthwhile and then another great addition is a voltaic servant as a 2 mana 1 3 that says at the beginning of our end step we get to untap target artifact so the obvious synergy here is with Steel Overseer getting to untap it once again so we can add more plus 1 plus 1 counters to the team. Makes this a very powerful 2 card combo. And then some of the other card choices include Arcanist Owl as a 4 mana 3 3 artifact bird with flying. And when it enters the battlefield we can take a look at the top 4 cards of our library and reveal an artifact or enchantment card from among them and put it into our hand. So this can find pretty much every card in the deck except for Karn and for Venerated Loxodon and gives us another evasive threat that pairs well with Tempered Steel and all that glitters. And then we've got two copies of Karn, Sign of Urza, which gives us a bit more resiliency against sweeper effects, giving us a Planeswalker that doesn't get swept up, and then makes a Karn Struct token with the minus two ability that gets bigger the more artifacts we have in play, can provide a bit of Karn advantage too with the plus one and minus one abilities. And then finally we've got the full playset of Venerated Loxodon, which is perfect for any low-curve aggressive white deck, which this certainly is. The only drawback is that we don't have any white creatures in the deck except for Arcanist Owl, so we won't be able to convoke tapping 5 creatures to play the Loxodon, but still pretty good if we can tap 4 creatures and add 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters, as well as a 4-4 creature to the board. That's a lot of power and toughness to work with. And then a mana base, since we're playing Arcanist Isle, we don't have any fancy colorless lands, and just 18 planes and 2 copies of Castle Ardenvale as another mana sink in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, with a reasonable hand. We'll need a third land, or maybe another cheap creature, to play alongside the Loxodon. Ginger Brute will do. turn to play a 2-2 stone coil or we could go for 2-1-1 stone coils to set up tempered steel even better. Going for double 1-1 stone coil does get blown out by Cry of the Carnarium but might be worth it. They didn't thought erasure me on turn 2. I guess he could have a counter spell for the tempered steel in which case I would rather keep the stone coil as a more powerful threat later. Alright, maybe that's enough reasons to go for the 2-2 Serpent here. 
If we knew for a fact they had nothing, then of course going for double stone coil would set up a more powerful turn 3. But we'll assume our opponent has some interaction. Alright, it's going to be Psy Master Thopterus, our opponent's also known artifact deck. Alright, so we can resolve Tempered Steel if we want. Or we can just go for Stone Coil plus Construct and next turn Smash. I can even play Lockstone if we play 1-1 one -one Stone Coil here, which seems worth it. And then this Tempered Steel will add 8 power and toughness to the board. So your opponent probably playing Karn and Tesseret as kind of their payoff cards. With Interplanar Beacon to gain a bit of life whenever they play a Planeswalker. It's gonna be a big Stone Coil Serpent for the time being. And we can attack with everyone. And then next turn we can maybe put the... All that glitters on the Ginger Brute, but our opponent scoops it up essentially. Alright, that was a pretty nice performance of Tempered Steel, on to the next one. We're on the play with a reasonable-ish draw. We don't really have a payoff yet, like uh, Steel Overseer, Tempered Steel, or even Loxodon, but we might find one with Arcanus Owl. So I'll keep. And then we've got a pretty decent curve to start with, with uh, Construct into Servant into a 3 3 Serpent, and there's our Tempered Steel right on time. Now I could play Serpent for 2 into Tempered Steel. I think that's worth it here. Apply the most pressure right away. If our opponent's on a Jeskai variant, Stone Cold survives Stephanie Clarion, especially with Tempered Steel pumping it. Opponent on the banned version instead. Well, two Tempered Steels. Or even better. Selesnya Guildgate probably implies some sort of Field of the Dead deck. Grazer can uh, absorb some damage. Playing a second Tempered Steel also plays around a Shatter the Sky a bit better, as we don't need to overextend into it. So if our opponent has Shatter, we can follow up with a Hasty Ginger Brutes for 5. But our opponent just explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Facing Omori, could be Winota. Do want to play Ornithopter, because I might decide to ult that Glitters on turn 2. Turn 1 Elf, definitely looks like Winota. So what's my best sequence here? Our opponent could have a turn to Legion War Boss, in which case I'll want a Voltaic Servant as a blocker. Could have attacked with Ornithopter for free. And yep, there's a turn to Legion War Boss. Alright, gotta put a pedal to the metal here. Which I think means Ginger Brute plus Glitters the Ornithopter. Could also Glitters the Brute, because they're not going to block with the War Boss. I guess that's fair. Gets in one more damage. And there's Winota. Opponent's gonna get two triggers. 
Oh, just a one. Gets Hactos with three, which we can block. But we can eat the 1-1 one, one token. Another Ginger Brutes. So I can play Ginger Brutes. Activate this Ginger Brutes. And still Convoke Loxalm. I guess that's fine. If I make both unblockable, is that better? I still kill them next turn if they don't kill me. Alright, hopefully they don't find Agent of Treachery. Another war boss. Could also just be dead here to Angras Marauders. Yep, and there it is. Can block Hactos, which deals 12 damage by himself. And another Angras Marauders. Alright, so we're super dead here. Best we can do is like. Block here, block here, still take a million damage. Alright, on to the next one. We're on the draw, facing a Yorion deck, but we've got a pretty decent draw. Construct into Serpent into Tempered Steel, even a Steel Overseer now on two. Definitely want to play Overseer as soon as we can. Wild Growth Walker, alright. Hopefully Steel Overseer survives. And then next turn we could Stone Coil plus Construct, activate Overseer, turn after, play Tempered Steel. A Loxodon could also be pretty good. So I could convoke the Loxodon, although then I'll have to tap the Steel Overseer as well, and I'm probably better off just activating it. So we'll wait on the Loxodon. And then I don't think there's a major reason not to just activate right away. Opponent passes with 4 mana up. We'll play the Owl and see what happens. And then I could still Convoke Loxodon if I wanted to. Although again, I might be better off just activating Overseer at that point. Owl Resolves finds other Overseer. Yeah, let's just activate this. I don't think adding a 4-4 to the board is too relevant here. And maybe we can get more value from our Overseer this way. And then, do I want to attack? I guess I do. Cavalier of Thorns, another elemental, so opponents with maybe a bit of elemental synergy with the Wild Growth Walker here. All right, so this could be a powerful turn. Get to play Steel Overseer and Tempered Steel. And then we'll just activate and smash. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet. So there is a bit of tension between the Loxodon and Steel Overseer at times, because we're often better off just activating a Steel Overseer. Of course, if we have Voltaic Servant to untap, it's not as bad. Or if we have more white mana available, so we can just Convoke and not tap the Steel Overseer and activate it instead. But of course, Loxodon is great if we don't have Steel Overseer going. On to the next one. On the draw with a nice opening hand. 
facing Godless Shrine. I'll play the Ornithopter in case we want to Glitters next turn instead of Overseer. Opponent on Esper. Thalia. Alright, so Glitters is not an option, but Overseer plus Ornithopter sure is. So opponent maybe on Esper Humans. If they can't answer, the Overseer will be in good shape, but there's definitely no lack of uh, answers here. So Freebooter's gonna take the Glitters, since we're pretty far from casting Karn. But we get to untap with Steel Overseer, which is what matters. Temper Steel, almost very good. No real point in attacking yet. Meddling Mage, probably naming Tempered Steel. Or they can go for Karn since they know for sure we have that in hand. But yeah, I rightfully names Tempered Steel. Alright, so as long as they can't answer Steel Overseer, we're still in decent shape. But they could have Hostage Taker maybe next turn to steal it. Loxodon's not bad. So we want to sap all our creatures here except the Overseer. Bugler. Can find Hostage Taker, perhaps. Finds General's Enforcer. Can make Thalia indestructible. But yeah, opponent concedes. Steel Overseer was just gonna take over the game. And too much damage has been done already. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, reasonable hands. Loxodon, not the best payoff in the deck, but it will certainly do for now. Opponent on a Lurus Graveyard deck with Fiend Artisan. So we're hoping to find Steel Overseer, Tempered Steel, maybe an Althead Glitters to put on the Ginger Brutes. Next turn I can Servant into Loxodon. Take five. Sadly, I can't play the Serpents, otherwise I wouldn't have the white mana to Convoke Loxodon. And then I'll untap probably Construct here, so I can block the Mire Triton if that attacks. Which is Oven in the graveyard, so if they play Lurus, they'll be able to get back Oven to combo with Familiar. Could double block Fiend Artisan as well, which I don't mind. Yeah, I guess that's my play. So the trade happens, and another Fiend Artisan. Play a 3-3 Serpent, Convoke Loxodon. Yeah, seems fine. And then do I want to make Stone Coil bigger? Doesn't seem necessary. And 
and tap construct once again. And then we can start chipping in with the ginger brutes and hope to top deck one of our artifact payoff cards. Because we will eventually die to this Lurus getting stuff back from the graveyard, like Witch's Oven, Scorpion. And just a land, so it's not looking good. Don't even know if an all that glitters is going to be fast enough to outrace the opponent at this point. They can also start sacrificing stuff to the Fiend Artisan as another mana sink. Priests. Yeah, I think this game's over. Alright, that's probably my best chance. But probably not going to be fast enough. Yeah, next turn we're going to be taking well over 8 damage between Priests, Cruel Celebrants, Familiar, whatever they get back with uh, Lurus. I can sacrifice Ginger Brew to gain 3 life, but probably wouldn't be able to win once we do that. Fiend Artisan probably gets another Cruel Celebrant. And now Priest represents a ton of damage with double Cruel Celebrant in play as well. So yeah, even if I sank the Ginger Brute, I'm probably still dead. Alright, and GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, with uh, good opening hands. Facing Aegis Turtle, so the Defender deck. Alright, so we're gonna take quite a beating on turn 3. Can expect to be taking 9 damage next turn. We just have to try and make our creatures as big as possible. We will write this story together. Play Tempered Steel. They could have waited since this is an instance and uh, killed me, but I guess now I'll just have to chump. So 
Stone Coil for 2 plus Steel Overseer seems to make the most sense here. Yeah, if her opponent just attacked, I probably would have blocked the uh, Serval with my Ginger Brute and then the uh, Aegis on Aegis Turtle would have killed me. So maybe they got a bit too excited. Now we could still easily die to Tetsuko, for instance, making their team unblockable. But we're not that on board. No attacks, that's good news. And Ginger Brutes, let's start with Owl. And take... Not sure what's better here. I guess Full Take Servant makes a lot of sense with Steel Overseer. Now I do have to watch out for like an end of turn, a Threnody Singer. So I'm not going to be too aggressive quite yet. I'll just wait it out. Can give them infinite time if they're playing Tetsuko, they could make the team unblockable. And Fae of Wishes might search up like a sleep effect. Or perhaps the three mana sweeper. Slaughter the Strong, I think it's called. Yep, there it is. So I can try to just kill them next turn here. Opponent's gonna minus Watley. Twenty-three. If I double activate Overseers, Point's got two blockers. Block, block. Can certainly take out Watley. Sparring Constructs. So if I send all my creatures at my opponent, they'll be forced to jump with both of them. Which I think is better than attacking Watley. And then I'll be able to play Servant to still potentially activate Steel Overseer. And then I can untap Ginger Brute to sacrifice it with its ability in response, or I can untap Steel Overseer to then put an extra counter on Voltaic Servant, so it's lethal. I think I untap Overseer. If they have a land, they can also play Fae of Wishes, which is unfortunate because they can use the Watley minus to not have to chump, but I guess I can attack Hotly instead then. Karn's not bad. So Servant goes after Watley, hopefully they don't have another Watley or High Alert in hand. Or I can just go face, but then I die to another Ages of the Heavens or other pump effects. So yeah, let's send Servant at Watley. Karn can minus, play Construct. So our opponent needs another Huantley or High Alert, plus some way of pumping the Fail Wishes to kill me. I will defend. Evil cannot withstand the right. Let's see for dead. Secret Keeper. Alright. So I shouldn't die here. And Tatsuko, so that definitely would have killed me a couple turns ago.
Now it's possible I'm supposed to plus one Karn in the hopes of hitting double tempered steel and or all that glitters, because right now my opponent could survive by jumping with a secret keeper, keeping Tetsuko and Fae of Wishes alive, and then if they top deck a high alert or a Watley, I would still die on the way back. But I guess I'll just minus two here. Alright, no high alert or hotly, please. And her opponent explodes. Sweet, that was a close game. Opponent probably would have won had they uh, played their ages at instant speed, but yeah, I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands. Facing Omori, so let's see if it's another Winota deck. Turn 1 Elf. Yeah, turn 1 Elf is tough to beat. Turn 2 Marauding Raptor. Alright, maybe it's not a Winota deck, although this also makes sense within that context. So if we Tempered Steel and Smash, I'm attacking for... 7 damage. I think I play Loxodon first. Ribjar Raptor. Sir opponents on dinosaurs. Do we want to trade? Yeah, I guess I don't mind it. Glitters probably still on the Stone Coil Serpents, just because it has a bit of built innovation with Trample. And then I can untap it with the Servants. And next turn, Tempered Steel. Should be quite good. Not too many ways for a dinosaur deck to beat Serpent other than just playing a bigger dino like Galta. It's gonna be Umori into another Raptor perhaps. Don't need to fear Reckless Rage since they had Umori as companion. So I think I'm safe to attack with Serpents. If I send in everyone, what happens? They just block these two, so that doesn't seem great. So now we could see Galta. They might be desperate to just draw the card from Enrage, in which case I should just take 4. Not sure what punishes me for just taking it. Yeah, I'll take it. Not a Ribjaw. And a Ceratops. Alright, so this will pump Stonequill by one. Alright, sweet. So our Tempered Steel deck did quite well today. Definitely important to have those Steel Overseers and Tempered Steels in our opening hand, because without them our deck can feel a little bit underpowered. All that glitters can also sometimes save the day. And I do think Loxodon is still a reasonable addition, even though there can be awkward moments with the Steel Overseer where you don't want to tap it. I've also experimented with a blue splash for Dovin, for Sai, for the post deploy, but came to the conclusion that it wasn't really necessary since the cards we care about are just the artifacts and the mono white cards anyway. So adding blue decreases the consistency of the mana base even more, so it didn't really seem worthwhile. 
but then in the sideboard, if we play this in Bust of Three, we have a Glass Casket as a great card as well, to maybe deal with an early creature from the opponent and increase our artifact count for all that gooders. So that's also a card we could consider for the main deck in some metagames. And then if we ever get a better one-drop artifact creature, we can potentially replace Sparring Construct. Would definitely love to see Memnite added as another zero mana artifact. Would make the deck a lot better as well. And there's plenty of other payoff artifacts that we might see in the future. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.